I have needs, you know. King Arthur's loaf of bread. What episode is this? I feel like I've done so many of these. It's like an endless doom cycle. I don't mean to be needy, but I don't want to need needed bread. You know what I mean? Hi y'all, welcome to Flambe, the most nightmarish cooking show on the internet. My name is Yanni and today is bread day. We're gonna be making a loaf of bread that requires no kneading whatsoever. <laughs> This is a great recipe from King Arthur for no need bread. This no need bread is fantastic for beginners. It requires very little work and very little time. So you're not gonna start a piece of artisanal bread that's gonna be ready in 14 days after a, a whole lot of fermentation. You get to reap the results, reap the benefits of this bread baking very fast. Hey, y'all out there, if you have not already, please go down and flambe that like button, roast it for the YouTube algorithm, please hit subscribe and tap on that notification bell. This recipe calls for 907 grams of bread flour. I think that is all too much flour. That can maybe feed a family of five. I am one person. Granted, I eat a lot, but not family of five level. I'm working my way up to it. So this is not a sponsored video. Although I wish it were, sponsor me. Step number one, get a really, really big bowl. The recipe said a bucket. <laughs> I don't really have a lot of buckets on hand. So this is the largest bowl I have. And therefore, I'm going to divide this flour recipe by two. We're gonna add 453 grams of bread flour. So this recipe calls for all-purpose flour. I have only bread flour. I think it's fine. It's gonna create stronger gluten development. It might be a little a denser bread, but that's okay. In that case, you're supposed to increase the water content by two teaspoons per cup of flour. So for this amount of flour, I have to add an extra seven teaspoons of water. Okay, we are adding 374.3, this doesn't read in point, <laughs> in tenths of grams, 374 grams of water. Oops, too far, damn. I'm gonna add a little bit of flour for good measure, damn it. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta feel it, you know? Don't get ahead of yourselves when you do it at home. Sit and actually measure these things, be very careful. They don't specify the kind of salt. Mmm, I don't like that. I need nine grams of salt. I'm using sea salt, they probably mean kosher. So normally you're supposed to proof your yeast in water that's lukewarm, like 105 degrees Fahrenheit, just to make sure it's living. But I can't be bothered to do that because mind you, this is a no need bread. So if I'm not doing some work, I'm doing no work. Six grams in one packet. I have to open a second packet for this. Grab a wooden spoon, grab a rubber spatula, and start mixing. If you have a stand mixer, a little fancy KitchenAid mixer, let it go for 30 to 60 seconds, not too long, because I <laughs> opt for doing everything by hand. Um, do it for a couple minutes. Just mix, 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 mix. When people who are really good at making bread make bread, a lot of times they'll include an auto lease step. This just means letting the flour hydrate from the water, just those two ingredients. That way you get a little bit of a head start on gluten development. Because this is a recipe meant for beginners and for super, super simple, yummy, crunchy bread, we're totally skipping that. So we're just incorporating everything in, in one go. My arm is tired. <laughs> I don't know how I would have needed this if it required that. I think this is all pretty well incorporated. Oh my God, there's nothing that smells better than like freshly yeasted bread. Except maybe baking bread. We did it, we made bread, that's it. You can start eating now. <laughs> we did all of the prep work. That is all it took. <laughs> this is gonna fly off the countertop. Next step, cover it in plastic and let it rest for two hours. Look at this. This is how high it's risen. It's like up to here. If it's already here, I don't know what's gonna happen. So next step, throw it in the fridge. You're gonna let this rise for two hours up to seven days. It's gonna taste more like a sourdough after those seven days. So depending on the level of fermentation and sour, you know, funky, delicious flavor you want, that's how long you'll leave it. We'll see. I haven't decided if I'm gonna finish this tonight or tomorrow morning. So <laughs> I'm gonna throw it in the fridge for at least two hours. We'll get back to it in a little bit. 
welcome to tomorrow, and by tomorrow I mean today, which is right now. I did 24 hours. I, I wanted to go to sleep last night. So this has risen quite a bit. I hope we got some of that funky sourness. We are only gonna take like a hunk of it, about a third of it, right? Start off by throwing a little bit of flour, dust the top. That way it's easier to grab. We are looking for like 19 ounces of bread. Ooh, this is chilly. Nice. That is perfect. All right, dust your bench over here, your work surface with more flour. We're gonna take this and we're going to shape it. This might be difficult to like roll it around like that. I'm gonna use my pizza dough technique that I learned from that. Also used in like mozzarella making. You just cup it and twist and cup and twist. I've got a plate here with some parchment paper. I'm gonna drop a little flour at the bottom here. Beautiful. This is so smooth at the bottom now. Nice. Drop our dough in. I'm gonna put some flour in a sieve and dust the top of the dough with this. According to King Arthur, this helps preserve some moisture on the surface and it keeps it hydrated. Who am I to say, oh, I disagree. Like It's King Arthur, you shut up and you listen. Let's leave it on the countertop for 60 minutes, maybe 90 minutes, it's chilly today. We're gonna let it come to room temperature. Preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. In the last 30 minutes of this bread coming to room temp, I'm going to throw my Dutch oven into the oven to preheat it. It's gonna make a beautiful, steamy, crackly exterior on the bread. It will be crunchy, crunchy town. All right, cool. See you soon. <laughs> See ya, wouldn't wanna be me. All righty, so we have let our dough rise for about an hour, 15 minutes. We've got our Dutch oven in the oven. We're gonna take this Dutch oven out. We're gonna drizzle a little oil at the bottom and then pop in a little cornmeal. So then that way we put our dough in. It's not gonna stick, it's gonna be safe, but it'll sizzle just the way we want it. Now there is a reason I have opted for a Dutch oven. The beautiful thing about these tools is that they have a lid. The lid is gonna trap that moisture. It's gonna get really steamy, like a hot, hot steam bath in there. What this is gonna do is it's gonna let the dough bake, but not let the crust set real quick. So that means while it's baking, the yeast is gonna keep working and the bread will continue to rise and rise and rise and expand. The other thing the steam does is that it gelatinizes the starches on the outside, so we get this really beautiful glossy sheen on the exterior. It's gonna make for such a beautiful freaking loaf. So while it's baking for the last little bit, I will take the lid off and then the bread will set. It'll finish and we will cut into it. Yes, get on board. It's so sensitive. I don't wanna hurt it while I pull this off. Oh, she is gorgeous. She is smooth and pretty, wow. Hot, hot, hot. All right, I'm going to pour a neutral flavored oil into the bottom, and then I'm gonna dust it with a little bit of cornmeal. Oh my God, this is so sizzly. And lastly, let's cut into this loaf. What we're gonna do is score the top in like a little X shape. This is gonna create these things called ears. They're gonna be beautiful and crusty and those cuts are gonna allow lots of steam to escape. And just to finish it off, a little flour on top using a sieve. All right, let us pop it in the oven. It is bacon time. Not bacon, baking time, they're different. Let's regroup in like 25, 30 minutes. Keep an eye on it, okay? Mmm, the, the perfume of a loaf of bread as it infiltrates the apartment as well as my nostrils. There's nothing quite like that. It's so fluffy, it's so soft. I was supposed to let this rest for about 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> I lasted like 20 minutes and I was like, I have to rip into this now. There's a nice crust on the bottom. Mm, it's so good. <laughs> mm. So yummy. There is nothing in this world, nothing like a fresh loaf of bread straight out of the oven, still, still hot in your hands. I'm really impressed. So considering we didn't need this at all, there's pretty decent gluten development in here. 
The impressive thing about this is that there's gluten development and then we, we did not need it at all. Nothing, not a little bit. This is a fantastic, fantastic beginner bread recipe. It took very little effort and it yielded such a beautiful, soft, pillowy result. But one caveat. When you pull it out of the fridge and you let it temper on the countertop for 60 minutes, I think it needs two hours. Because yeah, the temperature increases, it rises to room temperature in that amount of time, but you miss out on an opportunity for it to create more gas now that it's warm. So I think a two hour little second rise after it's out of the fridge is gonna be ideal for this bread. Oh mon dieu, le pain est très excellent. C'est très très bien. Wow, how do you say wow in French? Wow. <laughs> J'ai besoin de sleep, I need to sleep. Make some bread, eat bread, share bread, share it with your loved ones, with your friends, with your roommates. All right, get on out of here, you crazy kids, before I have to kick your butts out. Y'all, if you haven't already, please go down and roast that like button. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe, tap on that notification bell. As always, my name is Yanni, and thank you for watching Flambe. Alexa, how many grams of water are in a teaspoon? Alexa, what's 4.9 times 7? Alexa, what's 34.3 plus 680? Oh, no. No. Damn it. Alexa, what's 4.9 times 7? Alexa, what's 34.3 plus 340? 40 plus... Oh, Alexa, stop. <laughs> what was the conversion? Alexa, how many grams of water are in a teaspoon? It took Jesus less days to rise than this bread in my fridge.